everybody, and welcome to the first Inside Furman Athletics for the uh, new athletic season, 2023-24. I am Dan Scott, joined by Jason Donnelly. Once a month, we will do the Ask the AD and uh, head coach Clay Hendricks. I think you know these guys. It's one of those deals where say, guys who need no introduction, and then I just turn and walk off the stage. No, not at all. <laughs> Well, welcome everyone, and um, I just mentioned to Dan, we're, we're going to be working on getting this distribution out to a wider audience, so we may spend some time uh, on sharing some things that we do, but with this uh, segment is an opportunity for us uh, on a monthly basis to get together with, with one of our coaches or one of our uh, distinguished guests and, and have an opportunity to talk to them about what's going on in their world, and very excited to have Coach Hendricks here, and we'll, we'll get into that in just a minute, but uh, we also use this as an opportunity to engage our fan base. Uh, if there's any questions that you have or things that are on your mind, and you can send those things to Dan or send them back to our athletic department, and um, we'd love to discuss them and go through some things. Got opportunity to keep everyone up to page on on what we're doing with events and what we're doing with the athletic department as a whole. But today we uh, we have an honored guest, and uh, I can tell that he is in mid camp mode. Um, every time I've been around him, he's got the laser focus on, but I do want to share two highlights for our guests. Uh, first, Dan, congratulations on being inducted into your high school hall of fame. And I got to tell you, I love the picture of you pitching. I mean, that was, you look good. <laughs> well, no, number one, you saw how long ago it was. It was in black and white. <laughs> uh, I, I, I tell people that I, I patterned my pitching motion. When I was in high school after Tom Seaver, he, he was my mm -hmm. hero. He was still pitching then, and I had everything. I had the knee on the ground. I had the delivery. I had everything but the fastball. Yeah. So well, but, you, were, uh, you were low. I mean, you were, <laughs> I, you, you were full extension, and, and I could see Tom Seaver. And then uh, I jokingly also want to congratulate Coach Hendricks on, on his first uh, SOCON championship of the year. Um, we have a new tradition now. We got the, uh, the football media day and they've got the ADs and football coaches meetings. And, um, one of our colleagues came up with an idea to have a, a donor golf outing. So we, we are blessed that we have the best, I would make argument, George Quarles might argue this, but the best golfing head coach <laughs> of all the SoCon football coaches. And he carried us to a SoCon golf championship with the ADs and the coaches, but how did that feel, Coach, being out there on the course and, and carrying so uh, firm into the first championship of the year? Well, it probably doesn't say much about the, the level of golfing in the Southern <laughs> Conference, but we had a good day. And uh, there's really, you try to, you know, there's winners and losers, and yeah. we tried to win, and we were able to pull it out. Well, so. you know, I've got another way of looking at that, too, because years ago when I was working over at Clemson and Tommy Bowden was the head coach, always had his media day. And he always played on a foursome that usually finished somewhere close to last. Mm -hmm. And somebody in the press asked him about it one day, and he said, if my team won, you would accuse me of spending too much time on the golf course and not enough time <laughs> coaching. Yeah. So I, I think there was a little strategy there. Well, I, I think that, I think maybe Baron Bryant had a great comment about that, about you, know, if you show me a coach that's a good golfer and probably not much of a coach but i think steve spurrier put a dent in that a little bit <laughs> at least in that theory so well you were uh, you're a naturally great golfer and i know it goes back to your childhood and growing up and your family <laughs> and, and getting to play but um one of the things that, that really helped our team uh clay would line up all the putts and he just say hit it he, he he read the greens perfectly and he basically just put it here at this speed and it would go in and we the reason we won is because you basically line up all the putts and we just put it where you told us to put it it was it's a very strong performance on your part. Well, the name of the game is making putts, and we made a few that day. And that's yeah. probably the difference in the difference in the round. So. That was awesome. That was awesome. But let's talk. <laughs> let's talk for a minute football. And um, the Dan's got some questions too uh, from the fans, which I really want to have to get get to you because they're good questions. But uh, tell us your thoughts, and I'll just give you the impression I've gotten, and the observers that have come by practice have shared with me. Veteran team, you know, very skilled, very strong, very together. And uh, a lot of excitement. Just you can see the sharpness, the crispness, the attention to detail when you watch your practices. But what, what's your impression to date in terms of where you're at? Well, I'm pleased where we are. I think, you know, I've, we're about 45 minutes ago, we we're on the field. And I think the day was number 13. You know, I think the way our preseason set up, we'll practice 24 times before we kick it off and play. You know, I'm pleased where we are. We, we're still got some work to do. Um, you know, certainly do have a veteran team. Uh, we, we do have a lot of good football players and, um, uh, we have talent. Um, uh, you know, I, I continue to impress upon our kids, you know, 
Uh, we're not going to win because of talent, but mm -hmm. certainly we have talent, and that's a big part of it. So, but veteran crew, a uh, lot of continuity in our coaching staff from a year ago. Who I thought, you know, this time a year ago, you think about Tyler Huff had practiced 13 times. Yes. In fact, I was watching the old tape. He was still wearing the knee brace. And, uh, you know, so I think we're way ahead of where we were. Certainly Justin Roper and what he's done offensively with all the other other guys that we've had. And then defensively, the number of guys we turn. So, return. But uh, good work. Um, again, you know, you're just trying to get a little better each day we go out there. And I think that's the goal. We'll actually not practice tomorrow and then go uh, come back and go Friday, Saturday. And then and then next week, really, you know, at some point we'll turn our attention to Tennessee Tech. Good. Wasn't it Herb Brooks, the, the uh, coach of the 1980 U.S. Olympic team that upset the Russians? Wasn't it one of his famous sayings that he told that team, you don't have enough talent to win on talent alone? and driving home the point that it's going to take a lot of work and a lot of other things to go along with that. Well, I think you're right. And I think there are a lot of teams that way. I mean, uh, I mean, there's, there's a handful of people in the country at, at varying divisions or levels that, that probably could show up and, and be real talented, but the great teams, you know, certainly have a mixture of both those things. And, you know, you look out there on the wall, that field house and I, you know, I think back a lot of those teams and yeah, we had some really good players. Um, we had some talent, but again, I think that's kind of been our MO and that's something we need to continue to focus on. And and I think our kids are bought into that. And I haven't sensed, uh, you know, we had a good year a year ago and, and, you know, our kids told me, you know, because we didn't win anything. I said, I agree with you. And, uh, you know, I, I've never sensed one, one thing in the off season, you know, they just come to work and that doesn't mean we've been, been perfect or had a great day every day because we haven't but uh but i think their focus has been there and i i think you know we you know you you want to get through august you you want to get the work in you know and it gets to a point certainly you want to get ready to play a game and <laughs> it's a little more fun mm -hmm. at that time i think our guys are enjoying practice as much as you can enjoy it you know when it's when it's hot and you know you're slamming into each other and uh but uh but again please where we are and I think that's a great observation by the team because for them to say you know, where we are and what we want to accomplish, we, we've noticed the mature off season from them in terms of focus, in terms of commitment to coming back, uh, togetherness, all those things. And, and you know, a year ago, we're sitting at the, um, you know, the, the SoCon, uh, you know, media day and, and they picked us in the middle of the pack and you gave me that look like they, they got it wrong and you knew. And I think the difference this year is there's a sense of confidence and that people have seen this team, but you got to do the work and, and uh, going into this year and taking care of business as you go through that process, it was interesting. I ran into one of your guys grabbing lunch, and I, I said, uh, what do you think? He goes, he goes, as you'd expect, because I think the defense is further ahead right now than the offense, but that's typically where we are at Furman. But what, what do you, what's your take on that in terms of defense, offense, and, and that, how it's all coming together? Well, I, I think the strength of our team a year ago was our defense. I, I think we got a chance to be really strong on that side of the ball. And I did tell our team this. Uh, I've, I've been through a bunch of these preseasons, and you know, I, I really think your defense should be ahead of your mm -hmm. offense. You know, if you've got a good program, just um, it's not like you go out there and you tackle every day. And uh, you know, I think our defense got a little bit awake on Saturday. We got and we tackled. Yeah. And you know, it's not thud where every place mm -hmm. a tackle, and we miss some tackles. Mm -hmm. And I think offensively, we're to the point now where we can expose you. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I, I really – I think what kind of excites me about this team, and I think they understand, you know, offense, if you don't show up, they're going to embarrass you. Yeah. You know, and I think defense, if you don't show up, they can make you look really bad. Yeah. And we've had a little bit of give and take, which is what you want. Um, but but I do I do feel good about where we are. There are a number of guys we're able to play. I think we're still – I think we've still got some competition to be starters. I, I told them today, I know there's something to be in the – first guy out there mm -hmm. you know even when you play a lot of guys and certainly have some competition to be twos uh, maybe even some threes and then certainly the special teams you know where we were really good a year ago uh, i think that's gonna play a big part um so you know and competition only makes you better so we, we've had good competition between offense defense and within position groups and that, i think that'll continue now for the next week or so this is our first edition of Inside Furman Athletics for the new athletic year, and it uh, begins with our Ask the AD. We'll have questions for Athletic Director Jason Donnelly coming up in just a bit, but uh, right now spending some time with, with head coach 
Clay Hendricks. Uh, Clay, one of the questions that was submitted by fans uh, reads like this. It's been a long time since Furman football has been ranked this high in national preseason polls. In an era where players have instantaneous access to all of the hype, how do you and your staff keep the team focused on what's important? Well, I think it starts with the leadership of your football team. And I think, again, it goes back to the things our guy said. I just haven't sensed that in one way, any way, shape, or form. You know, I, t- I told them, uh, I think right before we broke this summer, you know, I'm, a, I, I, I'm a big fan of Coach Saban and a lot of things he does and says. And, you know, he's got the, if you can go find the, the video of him talking about the rat poison, you know, don't, you, you know, somebody's going to feed you the rat poison, tell you how great you are. And I just think, I, I mean, I've mentioned that a few times, but it wasn't because I sensed it. Uh, but again, I think it's just our, our, our coaches have done a really good job. And again, just goes back to, I think the maturity and the leadership you have in your team. And that is, I have zero concerns about that. We've got, we got to be able to go execute and, do got to go play and do all those things you got to do to play well and win a football game. But I, I just haven't had any concerns about that. And coach talk about the conference as well, because it, it's not just Furman that is, that is peaking and doing great in terms of where we're headed, but also I think there's a strength as you look across the SOCON as a whole, but can just, just some over overview on the conference as a whole in terms of, who you're expecting and what you're looking to see out there in terms of the, the conference to begin with. Well, I, I, I think that's a good observation. I, I know when I came back and, 2017 uh, to see where we are now as opposed to then you know compared to that time uh, you know i think there's a you know I, I i think i've seen our league you don't show up you, anybody can beat you uh but you know there there are about five teams that i don't know if you're just being honest where you feel like you draw the line i just think or i guarantee you they can beat you yeah. um i think just a combination of talent i think there is phenomenal coaching in our league yes uh, just go across, I mean, head coaches, assistants, all the way down the board. And I think that's really probably what has changed, you know, as far as people commit, I don't know about all that, but I just know they, they've got really good coaches there. They've got good schemes. Um, so it, it, it'll be incredibly challenging, you know, I mean, we were really felt like we should have had, you know, for whatever reason, we should have had probably four teams in. I mean, we, I know we had a couple that, you know, if they'd won the last week, they'd have been in. Correct. There's no question Correct. about that. And all could have won games in advance because, I mean, no, we played two really good teams in the playoff, and those two teams we played were not much different than a lot of teams we played in our league. Yeah. So and I, I think it's going to be that, that same well, way again. I'll give you my perspective from the AD side is that there's definitely a strong sense of commitment uh, investment and, and a lot of pride around the Southern Conference in terms of football. And, and if anything, I feel it more now than I did when I first got here. And I think that's a collective effort um, by the ADs, by the coaches, by the conference as a whole in terms of what we're trying to get done. The Last year, the push to have four teams in was real and went all the way down to the wire. Um, I, I think it's the same thing again this year. And I think what makes our conference interesting is that the teams at the top of the conference can beat anyone in terms of FCS. They have the ability – to, to do that. But I think what makes our conference really good is the teams that towards the bottom are dangerous. And I, I think that's a, that's a tough combination when you look at the season is that you've got some really tough home and aways and you've got some really dangerous games that are a part of the conference as well. But there's definitely a push on the part of the conference to get teams in. And one thing that I thought was interesting last year that our, that our prior commissioner had said is it's not just for us in terms of recognition of the conference winning and, and competing in the regular season, it's going to be success in the postseason in terms of being the FCS playoffs. So I really think the success firm in Samford last year is going to be pushing a lot of things forward in terms of where we are, not just as a program, but also as a conference. Well, and again, you can sugarcoat it however you want to do it. In the end of the day, we need to get teams in and we need to win games yep. in advance against, against these other leagues. And, uh, you know, I, I really think there's two things too, that I think really stand out because, you know, we're, we're playing 11 games. Um, I mean, look at who our who our Power Five game is yep. compared to these other leagues. Yep. I mean, we're rolling through the SEC and the ACC, and I mean that's who we're playing. We love it, you know. And and but you know the the opportunities for you to win those games a little more challenging yep. than a lot of these other leagues. And I think the I think the other thing, and I've I've been on this bandwagon ever since, really since I came back. These these leagues where you don't play everybody, you know, and and. Um, They've added members, and every year they're going to have teams with good records because they're going to catch the schedule right, and they're not going to have to play some of the better teams. Right. And 
I mean, you just go through there and look at some of those team schedules. Some of them are going to have really good records, just just the way the schedule lines up. And, you know, there's something when you play every team every year. And, you know, even we've had some teams um, historically, maybe even their style of play. You know, we've, you've had to play a triple option team. You know, when you have to do that every single year in your league and they know you and there's just something challenging about that more so. And um, I think that, that that creates a little more of a challenge, you know, in our league. But also I think I, I enjoy that part of it. Um, but, you know, we'll have to, you know, we'll get everybody's best shot. Um, I think we've always gotten everybody's best shot. Yep. And uh, I think a lot of people like to say that, but I don't know. I, I think there's – I think the – the, the purple bunch from Greenville, everybody likes to, everybody likes to well, give us their best shot. Well, another compliment too, and, and and Dan, I don't know if you're in the operations meeting, which is a, a large scale meeting with all the different members on campus who contribute to our football game days. And uh, one of the best messages that was there, and and, and kind of you know, Todd Duke was one putting it out there, is that we've gotten to a point with our football operation, we know what we want to do, what we want to accomplish, how we want to grow. There's all different things that we're doing. But there's a great sense of confidence in terms of what this environment will be and what we want to build to. And then the other part of it that I loved, and I, I was the, I'm was, i the one that speaks last at the meeting, and it, it got out there before I did, was the planning ahead, is that there's a great commitment on a part of your program. We're going to go week to week, practice to practice. We're not going to look far ahead, but we are going to plan for FCS playoffs, for FCS success, and we have our expectations and I, when people are in a meeting talking about going all the way through January, it's music to my ears because that means we're focused on the details of what we need to do every day and then also a long-range plan to get there. But um, one of the things I love about your program is that you set the sights for the team very clearly on what does success look like, what do we need to do as a program, How do we? what do we want to win, winning the in-state battle, you know, winning the conference, and, and ultimately having the opportunity to win the national championship. But um, I'm so excited, Clay. I'm fired up for this year ahead. Well, I think we all are. Um, I, you know, I, there's probably not many years you aren't excited. And, and, again, everybody's undefeated still at this time of year. But there's certain years you just feel like, you know, leadership, certainly level talent you have, experience, all those are big factors. You know, our sport is such a sport of being able to keep guys healthy. It is a sport of attrition, you know, and can you stay healthy? Uh, the old ball shape funny for, for a reason. It bounces a little different. But, you know, control things you can control. And, you know, have great prep, which we've had. We've had that all, all off season. And, you know, we just need to really get focused these next two weeks until we get ready to play. One of the other questions that was submitted for you specifically was kind of an open-ended question, I guess, but it's how can fans and alumni best support Furman football through this upcoming season? Show up, you know, be loud and be proud. I mean, I, I, you know, I don't know anybody anywhere if you got, 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 got a great home environment or on the road. You know, we've always traveled well. But, uh, you know, this – I think Greenville – and, you know, you've heard this throughout Furman, but just, you know, Greenville's ability to come support us. Um, and I, I think the landscape that we're in right now with the craziness that's going on in college athletics and college football, there's something unique about our place and our kids. And if that matters to you, you know, we're not pro football and, 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 um, you know, it's just great football, great kids, great environment, you know, great family situation. There's just all kinds of opportunities to come out here and support our, our bunch. And I, and I've, you know, I've heard from a lot of people saying that, but I think that's the best way. I mean, we, we certainly, uh, we're always looking ways to do things or, or create opportunities for people to support us financially. And, and those are big parts of it, but uh, I, the best way they can do it is just showing up and come out and have a great day here. I saw something today and it was relative to college basketball with the transfer portal. So, but I'd be interested to hear your take on it from a college football standpoint. The, the numbers are out for the college basketball transfer portal from 22, 23. One out of 12 of the players who transferred went up and the rest either made lateral moves or went down and 45% of the college basketball players who went into the transfer portal do not have a place to play this year. Are you seeing the same thing in college football? 
Well, we don't live in that world a lot, but but I, at I the same that, time, but, but, you, but I, you talk to people who do. I, I'm observant, and I that, that that number doesn't surprise me at all. Some people say that shocked me. That didn't shock me. It didn't shock me at all. It was just some. I just think some really terrible decisions have been made. You know, it, people always say transfer portal. You know, we always had a way to transfer. You know, I had to sign a release, but then they made it this open ended. You know, anytime, anywhere. Uh, then you throw the, you know. NIL in there with it, and it's just uh, – and now now, now, now we got the conference realignment, mm -hmm. which is nothing – in my opinion, you know, I, I guess I'm old enough I can say this, nothing but a money grab. And, you know, I heard all these people criticizing these kids about it. Now it's, you know, the ones that – right now it's college presidents and athletic directors at, at these huge schools. And I just – how how is it good for our sport? You know, I, I think the coach was the guy at Washington State said – you know, he's wondering about the time when, you know, television money was going to destroy. I think he used the word destroy college football. And he said, we may be there, yep. you know, as you, as you know it and see it. And so, you know, I think we're going to end up with a NFC and the AFC of college football. That's the way it looks, uh, you know, going forward. And I just, how that's good for anybody. I don't, I don't know. Well, looking ahead in terms of support, one of the things we want to share with our fan base is that this upcoming Saturday is our Fan Fest, which is the best opportunity to engage and come on out. It's a family-friendly event that will feature volleyball at 2 p.m. You can get a chance to see our volleyball team uh, in Alley Gym and then come on over for Fan Fest at 4 o'clock here in the football stadium. And, and our team will be practicing at 5 p.m., an opportunity to engage with them and autographs and this is a fun kickoff. It's uh, music and bouncy castles and dunk tanks and food and and uh, Furman fams coming out. And we'll, we'll have a great crowd we're looking forward to. But it's a great way to start the year in terms of coming out to support the team. But uh, any any thoughts leading into Saturday? Any thoughts for the team that you're going to have? Well, you know, we're going to be off tomorrow practice-wise. Uh, we'll come back Friday, Saturday. Saturday will be a practice for us. You know, we're at that time, we're 12 days out from playing. Um so I, you know, what we do maybe a little bit of scrimmaging with some guys, maybe. Um, I always encourage people, you know, if you, you know, you know, because you've been there, but there's something pretty cool about a college football practice. Oh, yeah. You know, and people oh, yeah. think sometimes show up for a scrimmage, but we got all kinds of stuff going on and we want people down where they can see. But we'll have a you know, it'll be a work day for us. So yeah. and I actually and, think practice uh, is better. And you know, not not taking anything away from a scrimmage, but a scrimmage is is like watching a game, it's a different situation and practices you get to see what really happens and you get a great engagement and great feel for what the team's actually working on and i i agree and you know we can do more good on good best on best but it'll, it'll be a really you know I, our practices our coaches do a phenomenal job just organization wise you'll see the tempo and such but it'll be it'll, it'll be a great day these, well, they, these have always been fun days and it will be too and want to make sure that i'm clear on something and our fans are clear on something we when we did this last year all of the bouncy houses and everything were out on the field outside the stadium, but everything's going to be down in the, in the end zone inside yeah. the stadium this year. Yeah, and the intent for that is that last year we had a great fan event up top, and we felt a little divided away from the football uh, action. So this year our staff has brought everything inside the stadium, so you can you can have all the fun and engage with the team. And 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 again, this is a this is an event we're expecting to see a lot of families, a lot of alumni, students will be back, orientations taking place. Uh, there'll be some brand new freshmen here. Uh, on our campus, and and we're looking forward to it. It'll be a fun fun time to kick off the year uh, and get the fun started for our fans. Live music. Uh, Trey Duncan will be performing. He's a former Furman grad, or is a Furman grad and a former football equipment manager. And then after the uh, workout is done at five o'clock, autographs. Fans will be able to get uh, autographs. One question I wanted to ask you before we let you go is the obligatory. Uh, who has looked good in practice? Question. <laughs> who who has who has stood out? Any surprises? No, you know, um, I think one of the things for me personally, when we were coming into the fall, you know, because I think we played two freshmen a year ago, really one significantly. Um, but it's who of that group that you redshirted would emerge. I felt like I knew enough about the other guys, you know, if they would continue to improve. But, you know, I've had some guys that, uh, you know, like a, a Ben Ferguson, you know, was a guy that played a little bit last year as a wide receiver. I just think he's had a really good camp, along with a bunch of other guys. But I'm just trying to think some of those guys that not many people know much about. Jaquan Smith, the running back, you know, he had a really good spring for us. A guy who we did redshirt, you know, a year ago, Caleb Williams, who was one of the few guys we played a year mm -hmm. ago. I think he's got a bright, bright future. Eli Brasher, a young offensive lineman. 
I'm just looking at some of these young guys that, like I said, not many people would have would have known much about. But uh, how about the aircraft carrier you have at your left tackle spot? <laughs> Big Fred. Everybody's going to know Big Fred. I think everybody already knows Big Fred. Big Fred's going to play a lot of football for us. Uh, and it really plays. I mean, everybody's going to see Mason Plyne, you know, the, the, the tight end from Ferris State that, that came in. And, you know, he's 6'7", 260 pounds. And, you know, certainly uh, he's going to help our football. Athletic he's too, going to right? help our football team. Yeah. But, well, speaking of tight ends, talk about Ryan Miller a little bit in terms of what he's doing and all the wonderful things going on for him. Yeah, I think Ryan had two catches. I think they played last uh, – in fact, uh, Philip Kreider was here. You know, Philip's with the Steelers, yep. former teammate of mine, and they were playing the Bucks. He he was not at the game, but he was giving me updates wherever he was watching. But I think Ryan had two catches. He's been playing a lot of special teams. I, you know, the the little bit of connections we have there, we've heard nothing but great stuff. Yes. Um, I've kind of learned that league. You just don't know till you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, – We've already had a bunch of teams through already this year, looking at some of our guys for this coming year. Uh, I don't know. I, I just think, Ryan, he brings so much to the table, yeah. you know, for his ability to do so many things. And, you know, it's a process. It, it, it is a process. But uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see him stick around for a while. Does, does, does his success, what he's doing now, raise more interest in your football team so, oh you oh you can go to Furman and and get to the oh, nfl well I, you know absolutely i i be honest with you i think mason plan is here largely because of that yeah you know he played in a great great program won a couple of national championships really originally went there as a basketball player but you know his goal is to play in the national football league and i think he felt like i had to be able to diversify my skills a little bit and develop some skills to do those things and certainly nick verna who coached you know, Ryan did a phenomenal job recruiting mm -hmm. him, selling him the total package here, and and man, he's been he's been impressive. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and he, and it, it's it's going to really be fun to kind of watch him continue to develop. But he's made of all the right stuff. But I think it already paid dividends there. It certainly helped us in recruiting. You know, you tell a guy, hey, you can be the next Ryan Miller. Mm -hmm. well, you know, we got a proven track record how we used him. Uh, you know, our coaches did a phenomenal job of getting Ryan the ball, um, and I th I think. Well, the thing I think kind of really excites me about all this is, you know, Ryan was the guy, there was no doubt we were trying to get him the ball a year ago. We have so many more playmakers mm -hmm. than we've had probably at any time that I can remember. I, I'm and, really I mean, excited. Kendall Dean made a huge play the other day on a, which Kendall played great for us a year ago. Mm -hmm. You look at Josh and Wayne Anderson now playing that position for two years. And then some of these young guys, certainly Dom Roberto. And some of those really excited guys. about your wide receiver core. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, and then, you know, I told him, you know, that, I think I said it earlier, but you know, um, Tyler Huff this time last year he practiced thirteen times. Yeah, yeah. you know, and so he uh, he's just a different guy too. Yeah. Well, Clay, we want to get you going because we're we, we're cognizant of time at this time of year, particularly. But we're so grateful that you are here. Leanne is here. Your staff is here. Your team is here. Uh, just incredible support. I I get to see uh, the best of Clay also off season. All the things that you do for so many different people uh, in college football and Greenville, Furman, just truly grateful for you, the leader that you are, the man that you are. And and uh, we're excited for the season ahead, and we're looking forward to being on this journey with you as we uh, as we embark. But thank you for everything you're doing, and, and good luck with everything coming up. Well, thank you. We'll take every bit of luck we can get. Thank and, you. Uh, but we're, we're excited, and uh, we're, you know, we're looking forward to that day getting here. We're not quite ready yet. Huh? Are you ever quite ready? I'm not sure we can. No, I, I think we get to that. You know, we're playing on Thursday. We get to we get to Friday. I think at that point now, there's not much more you can do. All right, Coach. That's Clay Hendricks. While he transitions out, there are already some things that are going on campus-wise here. As you check the schedule that we've got up on the screen, uh, everything from women's soccer at Presbyterian. Uh, on Thursday of this week, we're recording this uh, on Wednesday, so that would be tomorrow. Friday, men's soccer is here versus North Florida. Uh, volleyball, women's soccer, uh, all in action over the course of the next week or so. Uh, this is directly from FermanPaladins.com, so you can go there and check that out. All right, Clay has gone to do much more important things than hang out with us. Jason Donnelly, our Ask the AD segment is coming up here. What's the uh, what's the summer been like for you? I mean, first of all, well, do you and your family get any time away? Yeah, we did. It was really nice. Um, 
th this it's going to sound odd, but this is my fourth year here at Furman. It's probably the first time that I've felt a little bit settled. Um, and that might sound strange, but it takes a while to, you know, work, work through a transition. Um, it just in terms of, you know, your family, your work, COVID, all challenges that we've gone through in the past, but this was a really good summer for everyone. Good for our staff to be able to plan good for our staff to get some time off, uh, coming off an incredible year, but we, we had a, a nice two weeks where we were able to really uh, set back and enjoy some time together as a family. It was really, really great. And then that being said, I mean, just the energy and the enthusiasm we have coming into this year is really what, what drives it. But bef before we look ahead, I, I, I did have a, a chance to look back and reflect on last year and, and just, it's just amazing uh, what Furman athletics, these paladins have accomplished. And I just wanted to single out a few things. Um, and I know it sounds sometimes like an infomercial for what we're doing, but, um, the things we measure ourselves, academic success, um, just so proud of all of our teams. It's eight consecutive semesters above a 3 and there's an incredible distinguishment of, of amongst the different teams in terms of what they're doing and the awards that they're receiving and the 4.0 stu students and Dean's List students, but uh, just some incredible students that are here uh, at Furman. And then athletically last year, looking back on the success, I mean, everyone knows about the football success and obviously the basketball success, but the 10 straight championships with both uh, men's and women's cross country and the success we have with our golf programs and tennis programs. Um, but last year was another banner year for Furman athletics. We finished at the top of the Southern conference in the Learfield national rankings. And that's a big, big deal. Uh, but also Anna Morgan and Jalen Slauson winning the men's and women's athletes of the year. Uh, it's only a second time in the history of Furman that that's happened. And that's been back to back years and just very excited, excited to see guys like Jalen Slauson and Mike Bothwell playing on the national stage in the NBA summer league. And, seeing Ryan Miller doing what he's doing uh, in the NFL. It's just, it's just incredible for everyone that's around it. Um, when it's out fundraising success, uh, I think most people know this, but we've had our third consecutive uh, record-breaking fundraising year as we continue to drive. And that that is not possible without the people who are tuning in today is that support and the generosity and the participation of what's taking place. But that, that's critical. It's critical for what we're doing. It's critical to support football. It's critical to support basketball and the department as a whole. But um, we couldn't be more grateful and thankful. Uh, and then the final thing, just last year, if you look back on it, it was marked by engagement. You know, there was a point where we were leading the conference in attendance with football. Uh, we had a win game. I think there was all kinds of wind advisories, and we had to back off a little bit uh, that one time. But uh, the events, the social media, um, our staff still needs to put out a release about the $41 million in earned media uh, that we received in the month of March. You were all over YouTube and and everything that took place during that period of time and, you know, hosting women's basketball uh, regionals here in Greenville and, and doing all the great things that took place. But last year was a, a great year and, and our staff is very deserving of praise. The coaches, the staff, the student athletes and the support we got from our alumni and fans was just unbelievable. So just a big thank you to everyone. But yeah, this this summer was a good chance to catch our breath and then re-energize for the year ahead. Yeah, because it's I mean, the rea reality of the world is from an expectation standpoint, there's no going backwards, right? Right. Yeah, we, we're in a good way. Every year we look at it, you've set the bar. And um, you, you go into a year and you say, okay, what did we accomplish and what do we want to accomplish next? And uh, as much as we're going to work week by week, day by day, when you talk about a football season or a basketball season or any other sports we have, you want to you go past where you went the season before. Um, does that mean we're going to, uh, have another FCS playoff win. I, who, who knows? You know, what, that's the journey that you go through. But the goal setting is there in terms of what we want to try to accomplish with the football program. And, and Clay's pretty clear on that. Same thing with basketball. You know, you, you know, do you have the opportunity to win the conference again? Do you have the opportunity to win an NCAA tournament game? Do you have a chance to get to the Sweet 16? And and, and the goals for us are very clear. The work that we're doing towards that is that. Um, and that's not just for football, basketball. That's for every sport that we have. Uh, we discussed this in our head coaches meeting yesterday that we we believe that each of our sports is uniquely positioned to win a championship uh, in every sport that we offer. And that's important to us that that our students feel that way, that our coaches feel that way, that our fan base feels that way, is that that's what we're working towards doing. So, uh, yeah, there's no going back on last year. You just you start all over at zero and you go through the whole process again this year and you try to get better at the things that you did and, and you try to identify weaknesses or things that didn't go as well that you want to make better. But we We've been really using the summer to do that. That's really how I, I view our time in the summer is is it's kind of a 10-month proposition. From this point forward, there's no break. You, you go all the way from here through the end of May. 
Um, you get into the month of June. June is a lot of conference meetings, NACTA meetings, uh, administrative meetings. Like you go through this process of kind of wrapping up the year in June. And then in July, you get a chance to catch your breath, but you're really planning for the year ahead. So if you, if you don't do the work in June and July, you're, you're not ready for August. Well, because it's coming. People ask me all the time, are you ready? I said, well, A, it doesn't matter if I'm ready. It matters if Clay Hendricks and his football team is ready. But, you know, it, yeah, you're ready because it's coming whether you're ready or not. And if, if you're not ready to get into it, then you, you will be exposed quickly, whether it's on the field, mm -hmm. in the broadcast booth, or even in your office. Yeah, and it's it's this calendar that you keep behind you where you're saying, all right, what, what are the things that we need to do that are landmark? What's the preparation that goes into preparing for that? You mean the one that I still have to fill out? Oh, it's coming. Yeah. But, but, there, but there was a point last year, Dan, I mean, we, we hit two points of overlap that I remember talking about with you directly that I was concerned about your travel and you just just in your role just 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 talking about that is that the overlap between um, the football and basketball seasons and then the basketball seasons into the spring in terms of how much we had going on mm -hmm. and um, there was a point where we were saying even in the month of March there, the month of March there were no one took a day off the entire time and it was exactly what we want and it's exactly what we need to keep doing it's what I was used to before I got here it's what is what we're trying to get our fan base to be a part of and understand that th this is what it's supposed to be this is what we want to do and the, the challenge for successful athletic departments is that, you know, in the month of November, we, we, we want people to have to think about it. You know, what are we doing in December? If this football program wins and they play every week, how are we going to get to the football game, to the basketball game? Um, you know, we got a great basketball game at Princeton on, I think, Saturday, December 2nd. Well, we're going to be playing an FCS football game that day, too. So what are you doing? You know, where's everybody going? How do we plan for that? Um, and we've got one of our well-heeled uh, donors that said it great. He goes, fire up the private jet. I mean, that's. That's the kind of attitude that you want to have where let, let's do this. Let's get prepared for what we're going to do and let's be ready for the year ahead. But that's a, that's exactly where we're at right now is that level of preparation um, and, and really setting things aside to, to get that stuff done. So is there anything left on your list before we get to the questions we have? No, we're in good shape. I mean, the biggest thing I want to you know encourage everyone is to start coming out and, and, and join us in this journey starting on Saturday with FanFest. Just a great opportunity for a free event. Uh, and then, as you shared, the the soccer schedules are beginning. The volleyball mm -hmm. is starting as early as this Saturday. You got the cross countries are coming back this week. They're primed for a big year, and some of their events will be local. You know, there's a chance to participate in championships even with them uh, in the year ahead. But it, it is on. And then we are getting ready uh, on campus to to host these students who arrive for orientation. Um, I've got a parents uh, event tonight. You know, for students that are moving in tomorrow. And uh, orientation starts uh, moving days tomorrow, orientations this weekend, and we are off and running from this point forward. The next big uh, event for us will be the Thursday football game on Thursday, August 31st, uh, FU After Dark Part 2. And uh, we are very excited about this, and, and it had a great crowd last year, and we want to build on that. But our, our guys love playing under the lights. They got some exciting new uniforms uh, that were donated and th different things that have taken place, but I'm looking forward to the – promotional aspect of it. but let's get into the questions dan in terms of what everybody wants to know well one one thing as as we get ready to do that i i, I just saw on the list that drew ingerham sent to, to you and i uh fan fest we we touched on all of that with coach hendrix but there's one thing between the start of the volleyball game and uh, at two and between the uh before the start of, of fan fest activities here in the stadium at four o'clock and that's a football season ticket holder mobile ticket education seminar in the Herring Suite over in Timmins Arena. We are going pretty much all mobile. And I always kid the people I go to prayer breakfast with uh, on Tuesdays at my church because I'm always the youngest guy there. You know, old people in electronics. I'm becoming one of them. But if you are worried or you don't have enough of an idea about how that works, there's an info session at three o'clock in the Herring Suite that will take you all the way through every step you need to know about mobile tickets and your phone and how all that works. And, and that's a valuable piece of education for even me to know. But it's um, as we're making this change with Ticketmaster, which is a technology that's used uh, at the Bond Scores Wellness Arena. It's used in the NCAA tournament. So uh, used for a lot of big concerts. Um, there, it is a change, but actually the technology is easier to use. It's easier to transfer. Uh, there's a lot of pieces to it, and, and I would encourage you, if you have any concerns about it, just to reach out to our ticketing staff, and they can help walk you through things individually as well. But uh, we are continuing to to upgrade the technology and the things that we do around the athletic department to be more user-friendly. The other thing, too, 
is it gives us a greater sense of information and a better ability to serve our customers. So it's a part of that natural transition we're going through. But uh, but that's good. I, I didn't even know about that, but that's good to know. All right, let's get into the questions. And, and I want to start with the, the overall landscape. One of the questions that was submitted begins talking about how the Southern Conference has changed in the last 10 years with you know, Appalachian State, Georgia Southern, Elon Davis, and College of Charleston all exiting. And now we have all of this upheaval again mm -hmm. at, at the Power 5 level. So the, the question is long-term future, what's on the horizon for the Southern Conference and Furman's role in the SOCON? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I think part of answering that question is to look to the past before I got here. And then the Southern Conference did go through a great deal of upheaval. And, and you saw the change in terms of um, – how football was viewed when, when you lose the App State and the Georgia Southern. You might be saw some of the change when you have the Davidson leave with the basketball and the impact that that has. But from my perspective, and this is uh, since I've arrived in 2019, uh, one of the best things that we've done with the Southern Conference is we have engaged with each other and we really solidified our membership. Uh, I will tell you that two years ago, our entire conference was in a process where kind of the mid-major level, there was a lot of potential movement. There was things that were taking place. And if you look back, You'll, you'll have seen some mid-major conferences that have been altered by this, uh, the, the Colonial being one of them, the OVC. I mean, there, there's been a lot of different changes The sun, it, it just around us, the mm -hmm. A-Sun. And I would say that probably every school in our conference was getting solicited by another conference to move on, to go in another direction. And what this is, really is, is like it's a domino effect, is that you have to look at your membership. You got to look at what you're all about. And then if you begin to lose members, that's when you're vulnerable in terms of where things are. Um, all of these different programs brought this information to the table. Uh, Furman, I believe, is one of the leaders in this process. We were one of the people that really pushed to keep the conference together. You know, in terms of what the process we went through, we were open to listening in terms of what that was. But we also recognize what the conference does. We've got great geography. We've got great rivalries. We've great. We've got great uh, competitive balance in terms of what we represent, and we also have affordability when you talk about regionality. It allows us to operate at a high level in terms of where we are. Uh, so one of the best things I think that the conference, the ADs and the presidents did within the last two years was actually double down on the membership in terms of sticking together. So sometimes when you look at that, you might say, well, what's going on with the Southern Conference that you could look at continuity as a good thing or a bad thing? We, we look at it as a, a good thing. We, mm -hmm. We've been stable. We've been strong. And the people in our conference want to be there. Now, at the same time, we've also been assessing the landscape around us and looking at membership around us. I, I will tell you that the feedback we get is that the Southern Conference is in a desirable place for other members to want to be. So we have assessed a lot of different um, other institutions that would want to be in the Southern Conference. And at the same time, we've also assessed what would we want the Southern Conference to look like if we were to move forward. Um, conversations have had, things have taken place, but I would say that at the moment, the conference is solid with its membership. I don't see anything changing in the foreseeable future in terms of where things are at the moment. Um, I think we're going to continue to work together well, but I think we're all watching this landscape to see where this goes. Uh, at the current moment, in the bigger picture of college sports, so much of this is up in the air. Um, and, and really, it's going to get decided by the Power Fives in terms of where this all lands. You've seen mm -hmm. the changes with uh, the Pac-12 in, in recent weeks. That that was coming. Um, and then the ACC is going through things. So everyone's in a different space in terms of where the Big Ten, the Big 12, the SEC is. And then again, it'll be a domino effect. It's going to be what happens when and things change. Um, for our fan base, you know, watching the Pac-12 is interesting. It's a case study. Um, I lived through something like that when I was in the Big East, and, and I understand it. Um, it. More close to home, we need to be watching the ACC and the SEC in terms of what that is for us geographically and where we are. Um, would I love to sit here and tell you we've got an offer from the Big Ten to go? Um, that would be fun to talk about, and, and uh, fans would certainly love to do, do that. But that's just not where we are because right now these decisions are about Power Five football. That, that's mm -hmm. what all of this is. Um, and then it's going to be interesting to see what the shakeout is on this in terms of how the Power Five or the Power Four or Power Two shakes out, whatever that becomes, as Clay described it. Uh, and then the impact on the group of five, the schools that are in the middle, it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out for schools that we've competed against in the past. What does it look like for App State? What does it look like for Georgia Southern? What does it look like for JMU? You know, what's the future of football at these different levels look? But we are we're watching this. We're aware. We're engaged. We've had conversations. We know what it is, and we're prepared, uh, you know, to move if if necessary. But we're we're in a really good position right now, both with our conference and in terms of our role in the conference today. 
Let's see, you actually answered one of, of the uh, other questions about uh, possibly adding teams. Uh, any updates on um, possible football indoor complex and or field house combination and fundraising? Any any news on that front? Yeah, so so we um, in, in a really good way for those that don't know, we're in the middle. We're we're in a capital campaign uh, as an institution, which is going to go through 2026. And uh, our campaign priority for the institution right now is the completion of Timmins Arena, the renovation of that. We've already began phase one, as many people know, uh, which consisted of the offices, the film rooms, the locker rooms that, that came great. Uh, we've been focused on completing phase two, which is the arena bowl in the outside of the building. Uh, and that process is going just as expected. It's going great. And uh, the hardest thing about fundraising is that for the everyday fan, you're like waiting for like, when, when's that shoe going to drop? And we're going to find out. Um, our, our job as fundraisers is to to put it all out there, to have that process, to know that you can hit your numbers. And then you got to you got to be patient enough to wait for that final confirmation. So you just kind of get into the the dotting your I's and crossing the T's in a process. But that's a totally normal process when you're dealing with this much amount of money, um, which is really a 40 million dollar goal to get there. So things are proceeding forward in that space. And then as you look to football and you look to other projects and practice facilities and capital projects, we are actually spent part of our summer this, this summer talking about the next stage for, for where we're going to be in Furman athletics next. And that does include uh, facility enhancements that would be donor funded in different areas, including football um, increase in, in investments in basketball investments in other aspects of campus uh, that would impact all of our 18 sports so all of those things are on the list, but at the at the moment, uh, from a leadership perspective, from a board perspective, number one is is Timmins Arena. We're not gonna we're not gonna take anything on until we're done with Timmins Arena. Transitions into a, a couple of basketball related questions. One being uh, kind of a sister question to the one with uh, to Clay a moment ago. Best way to support basketball through the upcoming season and beyond, and how can they increase Furman's ability to retain Coach Ritchie as long as possible, including at least one year and maybe more once that renovation is finished? Yeah, great question. And I love Coach Hendricks' answer, uh, loud and proud uh, and in there. So the, the number one thing that you can do to support these programs is show up and attend. Um, I, I don't know how to explain more than, than, than that in terms of what it is. It, it means everything to the coaches, to the student athletes, to the athletic department when we have strong attendance at these games and I, and I describe it as we're going to have five home football games and then hopefully FCS playoff games, but we need the fan base for all five of those games. We need to pack out, be loud, strong, give the home home field advantage that we want to have. It's the same way with basketball is that we've got to provide that home court advantage that we've been building towards. And, and um, we are proud of where things are headed. Season tickets, sales and opportunities are up. Um, the support has been there, but, but option number one is, is to come out to the game. Um, option number, the second thing we'd like to do in addition to that is, is financial support in the form of fundraising and supporting these programs financially. Uh, the way the firm and athletics fund is set up is that you can give to whatever mechanism that you want to give to, uh, which include everything from uh, football or basketball or other sports that are out there. Uh, but it empowers you as a fan to, to put your money where you want to invest and the philanthropic nature of what we do is really important. We have been supported at a high level and success is, is at a high level because of that support. So uh, the one thing you can do is come out and, and support at the games. And the second thing that you can do is, is get involved with the fundraising efforts that we have. That's going to be really important. The third thing that we need to do is, is we have a responsibility, not just for ourselves, but also to help the community engage Furman. And, and any groups that you have, any people that you have, this is this is your church groups, this is your kids' um, little league teams. This is your football. Like we had a football jamboree here. We had 16 teams, and, and all of them were saying, come back to be a part of Furman football. But um, we need to engage people around it and, and bring people here. And if people don't have the resources to pay for tickets, our department will help. There, there's a way to go about this uh, process from a community service standpoint that we can help. So if you can bring more people to the table, what, what we have found is that when groups come and they, they enjoy this, they get more engaged. So, so the th things you can do is you can show up and be a part of it. We need that. Uh, you can support it financially through fundraising. And then the third thing is just the group aspect of bringing people. Uh, and then on the on the Coach Ritchie front, uh, just this is just going back to last year. Uh, and I'm grateful to President Davis and our Board of Trustees. They they supported a, a contract extension for for Bob Ritchie that is really significant and, and that really 
puts him in a position to be here. So um, I think that step has been done. Now, does that mean he's here forever? No, you know, but is his intention to continue to be here and compete? And, and yes, that's in line to be here. So the intention and the investment is there. Uh, it's the same way we look at Coach Hendricks with football. Is that this we we have the people we want to have be here, and we got to continue to invest and be intentional in that space. Um, but what you can do to help Coach Richie is support his program, and and I, and I just showing up to the games and financially supporting. And if you really want to get invested at a high level, uh, this Timmins Arena project is right in front of us. And if there's something that you want to do more now, uh, getting that arena over the goal line, getting that arena under construction, and getting everyone back here in two seasons once it's done is a priority for us. So so that that would be really crucial in terms of re retention with Coach Ritchie. One of the other questions was, um, when's the basketball schedule coming out? And I don't know that we we can fully answer that question, but uh, will there be any other games at the well besides Wofford, and will there be a Greenville Invitational Part 2? Yeah, so the, I love this question because it actually allows me to talk about a little bit of the larger context of scheduling which with our program. So – um, I think scheduling for the foreseeable future is going to be one of the hardest things that our men's basketball program is going to have to go through. Um, in my previous role at Villanova, I did the schedule for our program, and I'm just going to be candid. We, we would not play Furman. You know, I've called up there to them. They, the strategy hasn't changed because what you're supposed to do on the other side of it when you're the power program is you got to assess the team and say, is this risk worth whatever the reward may be from the win? So we are unfortunately in a spot right now because of our success that Furman is having a really hard time scheduling power five schools, big East schools for a game. Uh, we know who's looking. We, we know where to ask. We go through that process and we know who has said no. Um, but it hasn't been just a no. It's been a, been a, a, a heck no. You know, we're, mm -hmm. we're not going anywhere near it. There was an article about the College of Charleston. They're going through the same exact thing um, with their coach. They got a great coach. They have a great program. Uh, as well, but people are just not going to play you. And the way that the metrics are set up right now, don't play to those teams to playing you. So uh, scheduling still in progress. It's it's something that our staff has done a great job of building out what we have, but this is going to be a wait and see. And wait and see <laughs> means sometime you've got to wait as long as you can to try to get what you want. But people are starting to announce their schedules, and we're gonna we're gonna have to wrap up pretty soon. Um, the year ahead is going to be interesting because we're going through the process of this will be the last year that we play in Timmins Arena, given the, the fundraising goals and everything's met and the approval process that we go through. Uh, but we're treating this in our minds as the last season in Timmins, and we're going to make the most of that. That's been a big part of our process. Um, we're still working with the Bond Scores Wellness Arena. You know that I love playing down there. Um, I think it's great for Furman. I think it's great for Greenville. Um, and we're still committed to that. But we're, we're kind of looking at things in a three-year landscape. We've got this is our final year in Timmins. We've got to make the most of this and enjoy this. Next year, we're completely out of Timmins Arena while it's being renovated. We will be playing downtown and in other places, and that's a part of the plan that we're working on. And then th one season, two seasons, three seasons from now, we're coming back to Timmins and Timmins Arena, and we're going to have a strategy about how we're going to utilize Timmins and everything else that comes with it. So some of these things are up in the air. Uh, the only disappointment I've had this summer is that the Greenville, invitation, the Greenville Invitational will not take place this year. Um, and that's not a, a Furman thing. That's just a part of a larger partnership that we're working on to grow that, uh, to really be something significant for Furman and for Greenville. But the logistics on that uh, just weren't doable to do for this year. So we will not be doing that, uh, but we're going to still keep working on that towards the future as we continue to grow our brand and our association uh, with the Bond Scores Wellness Arena. But we'll we'll be in we'll be in touch soon about strategy on scheduling, and and Coach Richie and I are meeting about that this week. So we're looking forward to. Looking forward to sharing more soon. The only other questions that we had submitted uh, all centered around um, apparel and licensing, and we actually have some information now. You you share it, and I'll chime in. What what do you got? Well, I, th this is this is what we know at the moment, mm -hmm. and, and I, interest full disclosure, this is what Drew Ingraham told me that we know at the moment. Yeah. I don't know this. <laughs> uh, number one, the Furman Bookstore will have replica football and basketball jerseys available for purchase no later than August 30th, which is the day before the opener. Now, these replica jerseys are created by fanatics through their relationship with Barnes & Noble. They are generic and will not, underline that, will not reflect our student athlete's name, image, yeah. or likeness. And that, as going through this process, Fanatics is is the best that you can work with in terms of the, the product that they produce and what they do. But this is a major change. I know sometimes people have had questions of what, what are you doing in the apparel area and how are you going about it? 
part of the changing landscape is the change with name, image, and likeness is that mm -hmm. we, Furman, can put out our jerseys through Fanatics, but they can't represent any current players you're getting into the whole thing that's there so i mean they might have a number six on them but they're not going to have huff on correct, the back correct and i and i think if anything um i think they in some ways have to stay away from that because you got to be that careful in terms mm -hmm. of what it's going to be um but yes that's that's the example and then the next side of it the the part two is that we will have jerseys that you can order that will have the names and numbers of the student athletes, but the student athletes will be involved in that as a part of name, image, and likeness so that they will be compensated through that process of their name, image, and likeness, which is a great advantage. And that's part of why this process has taken long is that we, Furman, want to get the jerseys out, but we, Furman, also want to make sure we're taking mm -hmm. care of our student athletes in this space. But you want to share more on the second part? Yeah, the, the licensing of of the uh, what you were just talking about for the student athletes and, and, and getting – um, getting some of that money back, that apparel will be online only and is contingent on the student athlete entering into an agreement with the apparel provider. So in other words, you're not going to be able to get a football or basketball jersey with your favorite player's name and number on it unless that player has entered into Correct. an agreement which obviously provides them with some compensation, uh, uh, with some compensation under NIL, and when that happens, those will only be available online through uh, a company called Athletes Thread. Yeah, and we love this. I mean, we we want to support our student athletes. We want to help them monetize their opportunities. And uh, nothing would make me prouder than seeing our whole community out there with football, basketball, soccer. Uh, jerseys, whatever it is. My my kids are the same way. They'd love to have jerseys in terms of representing the team and in terms of the things that they do and their favorite players. But uh, that's the process where we are. So we will have we will have uh, my 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 mandate to our department's got to get done by 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 football season. We got to mm -hmm. be ready for that. Um, and then they've also gone through the process of name, image, and likeness, getting ready for that as well. So we're we're going to be prepared. And then there's one more avenue to this. Um, we are working with one team partners to offer online student athlete jersey sales through the bookstore provider Barnes & Noble. So if the student athlete opts into the agreement, fans will then be able to order specific replica jerseys. Much like Athletes Thread, the student athlete must opt in to be part of the group merchandising opportunity, and then the university and athletic department cannot act on their behalf. Once a certain percentage of the team roster is opted in, then these apparel opportunities will be made available through the Furman Bookstore website. Again, that will be online only. Well, one of the cool things, too, that um, that has really kind of caught on is this FU After Dark t-shirt. Mm -hmm. And um, this became a huge hit on our campus last year. And actually, we got people asking us for shirts already. But uh, I believe that starting in orientation weekend, they're going to have the FU After Dark t-shirts available in the Furman Bookstore. Uh, that's certainly something that you can grab leading up to our night game on Thursday, August 31st, which is very exciting. So uh, we're we're going to keep growing in that space. It's certainly an opportunity for firm, and it's certainly an opportunity for our fans. But that's the that's the update in terms of where we're at. The only other thing that Drew wanted us to kind of let people in on was the fact that season ticket sales for football are outpacing last year's record numbers. But there are still plenty available, and group sales experience are available for the home opener on Thursday night. And experiences include but are not limited to pregame tailgate experiences next to the stadium, a facility tour, pregame field access, and be a part of the team tunnel when the Paladins take the field. You can contact Houghton Flanagan at 864-294-3517, 294-3517 for all of your ticket needs. Yeah, and anytime your ticket team tells you that you're 337 tickets above where you were the same pace last year, it's it's music to your ears. And mm -hmm. and again, we want to continue to grow. But but specific to this, Dan, as we as we look to wrap things up, um, what we want this to be for our fan base is an opportunity for you to engage with us. Uh, you can reach out to Dan at any time, uh, any question. We're, we're happy to take anything on uh, that's of interest to our fan base, and we'll get through every question that we possibly can. But this this is an engagement opportunity for us. If there's people you want to hear from, things you want to find out about, uh, we'll be bringing our coaches and different guests through, but we're grateful for your support. We're excited for the year ahead, and and it's going to be a, another fun year for the Paladins. I hope so. Uh, I, I like getting excited. I think so. I think so. <laughs> you you were certainly very excited last year. We, well, there was a lot to get excited about. Yeah. Thank you, Jason. Thank L you, Dan. Looking forward to it. And we'll be uh, kicking off the regular schedule 
of Inside Furman Athletics coming up in the next week or two once everyone is back on campus and settled. And then once a month, Jason will join us for the Ask the AD segment. Good stuff. That'll do it for us on this uh, first edition of the new school year of Inside Furman Athletics. For Jason Donnelly and for Coach Clay Hendricks, who was here earlier, I'm Dan Scott, as always, saying God bless you. So long, everybody.